Perfect. So today we're stepping out of Rhino and back into V-Ray again. So as is traditional in this class, we spend a couple days in Rhino and then we drop back into V-Ray and we spend some more time in V-Ray and then we go back to Rhino and we keep flipping back and forth. So uh, we'll continue with complex surfaces next class. We're actually going to get into modeling and working with terrain, which is one of the most complex surfaces. Um, and so we'll work through that. We'll go through some strategies and, and ultimately we'll do our next assignment where we'll learn how to build a physical model from uh, our computer models. But in the meantime, we do need to continue to refresh and to improve our V-Ray skills. So today's uh, V-Ray lesson is fundamentally about materials and kind of how they're made up and where, how do we get really complex materials. And so uh, we've worked through some of the basics. We've talked about reflection and materials before, but today we're going to talk about photorealistic materials. So things like shingle siding, for example, how would we create that? And some of it is great because it's all built into V-Ray. We can use the default materials uh, and be just fine. But other times, you want something very specific. And this happens to designers all the time. We have a specific look and a specific color and a specific material that we want. And that material doesn't exist in the default V-Ray library. So we need to go about finding ways to either find the material online that we're after or take a material, modify it, or create a material entirely from scratch. So we're gonna go through those strategies today and I'll, I'll kind of talk you through it. So uh, I have pulled up on the screen here uh, our, our basic setup today. I do have a file, a test file. It's called materials test.3dm that's set up for your rendering purposes. Um, so you'll want to right click on it, save link as, uh, download it into your flash drive for today. So let me get into my folder for today here. I should probably create a new folder. There it is. And we'll go ahead and save that materials test file. That'll be the file that we use in Rhino. Here's our can't be downloaded securely. Yes, please let me keep it. Yeah, keep anyway. I got gotcha. you. It's still okay. So let's go ahead and open that file. And while it's opening in the background, I'm going to continue talking about what we're doing. The next step here, I have actually divided into two parts. Some of you have taken 135 with me. Some of you haven't. Um, if you haven't taken 135 with me or you don't feel that comfortable in Photoshop, you're going to primarily do this part 2A. If you have taken uh, 135 with me, I want you to, at least for one material, try playing around with part 2B. And that's where we're actually making a material entirely from scratch. I'll demonstrate this after we go through some more information about materials and part 2A. So I will do this as a demonstration today. Um, but for those of you that haven't, taken 135 or didn't take it with me or don't feel comfortable in Photoshop, don't panic because it's not really part of the class, but I like to show you this in case you end up coming across that. And you know what? I have to build my own material. Um, and that's where that part comes in. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do some uh, renderings with them and you'll start kind of working through how you create these materials. Uh, and ultimately you'll post a rendered image for each material that you create in Canvas. Okay. So We'll come back to that and revisit it. Let's see how our Rhino is doing here. Let me get organized. Let's close off these V-rays, except for the main toolbar, which will dock up at the top. And then I'll go up to render and I'll change my current render to be V-ray for Rhino. And then we can start looking at these objects. So I have two objects, they're pretty simple. I have a square and then on top I have a, a, a sphere. And when we start thinking about materials, I'm going to first do a demonstration where I'm using a material so that you can kind of see it. The material that I'm going to use is a material that I have on my flash drive. So I'm actually going to load this material rather than using one of the presets here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and load in a material. I'll go to material here and let's add an asset. That's new. Let me open. Sorry. There we go. And let's get into my resources. And I have a whole bunch of V-Ray materials that are on my flash drive here. And the one that I'm going to do is a shingle siding. And then I'll go ahead and open that material up. So this sh sh shingle siding, I'm going to stumble on that word, uh, conveniently didn't load. That's nice. Um, so we'll have to go through, and this is actually a good practice. We'll, we'll load everything up. Why did it just log me out? That's annoying. Hang on a second. Let's 
get this back. And you watch, it's going to give me a whole brand new instance and I'm going to have to re-log in everything. No, okay, good. We got it back, thankfully. That's weird. Don't know why it logs out. Okay, so um, what we need to do is we need to start envisioning this material and thinking about the parts that go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and I'm going to assign it to the selection here. I'll apply to the selection. And then we have to think about what makes up this material. So I'm going to jump over into a kind of a demonstration that I, I pulled up. Maybe. Oh, come on. So this is most definitely a problem with the remote desktop, not me. Can you guys still hear me? Okay, I haven't, I haven't uh, disappeared, right? Yes. Yeah, we can. Yes, we do. Okay, so it's it's remote desktop issues, not not my yeah. issues. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try to to disconnect and connect back in and see if I can get it back. That's really. And I don't think it's specific to Rhino. All right, we'll try it again. No, it's good and frozen. How nice. It's real easy to, to teach when the system fails you, right? Let's try again. Oh, how nice. Try it again. So I'm betting that the computer I was on crashed and therefore I'm on a brand new computer. So I apologize for this, but you guys are going to have to wait while I sync up all my files um, so that I can actually start teaching again. So bear with me. I apologize, um, but we'll get there. Give me another five minutes and I'll, I'll get everything going here. All right. Is it really going to crash out on me again? Well, there are clearly gremlins in the system today. Of course, why wouldn't I have to have two factor?
we have to wait for one drive to decide to load. So you guys get to see the inner workings of all this. So that well, what was the problem? Just the this computer just got crashed. Yeah, the remote desktop that I was connected to crashed. I'm guessing it like got turned off or something. Oh, okay. Um, so it crashed and then crashed hard enough to where it didn't give it the same computer back to me, even right. though I was on it. So it gave me a new computer. So now I have to go through and and correct all the things that uh, I had working before. This is all the stuff that I do before you guys show up to make sure that I'm ready to go. But unfortunately, you guys get to witness the whole thing this time. Oh, no problem. Yeah, hopefully it's not going to happen again. Uh, yeah, you know, this. these are the things that end up being outside of my control. Yeah. All right. And I had all of these nicely prepped for us, but we're going to have to do it um, the old fashioned way. So what I was about to try to show you was that materials are made up of several different components. And these different components uh, are kind of like layering up materials. And so what we have to be able to control is how these layers are applied. And so I created this, if Photoshop ever decides to open, this example that kind of shows how the various layers come together. And then we'll go through the process of kind of building it out. So this example right here is kind of how materials are created in V-Ray. So at the top level, at the topmost level right here, this is purely a photograph of a shingle side siding of on a building. So we start with just a photograph. So that gives us the photorealistic color as part of our image, but it's perfectly flat. And you can see that it's perfectly flat. We can then take this image and add what's called a bump map to it that starts to give us some texture on the material. So I've taken the, the color away so you can see the texture by itself. And that texture is the fine grain of the wood that's being applied to it. Then we can add essentially a third layer. And that third layer is called the displacement map. And you can see that what we're starting to get rather than fine texture is the large texture, the, the shingles, the slope to the shingles themselves, the butt ends, the gaps between the shingles, that's what we're creating with that displacement map. And finally, we apply all of these together and we get the full texture that has the, the big deep grooves, it has the surface texture, it has the photo color applied to it. And as a result, it ends up looking like a shingle siding system would look like. So let's look at how we would create that in V-Ray. So let me close all of these and we'll have to get reset here. Uh, I'm going to go to render my current render and make sure it's V-Ray for Rhino. There we go. And like I said before, I was going to load that material. I could just actually create uh, it from scratch. But since I have it on my flash drive, I'm going to go ahead and load it. And then we'll look at where all the pieces belong. Uh, and I'm doing this one specifically because I have the example where you can see where the pieces come together. Okay. So I have that shingle siding. And I want to apply it to our objects here. So I'll right click and I'll say apply to selection. We could also take our image here and we could turn it into rendered mode so we can kind of see a preview of what it would look like. There it is. Oh, thank you so much for being uh, black. That is not helpful. Um, let's go back to shaded for right now. We'll, we'll come back and render it again. 
But in this sense, what I'm trying to load isn't working. So what we need to do is we need to apply all of those various pictures. So if we look at my example, the first one is the photograph of the material itself. So if we were going to apply that, the place that it belongs is where we would change the color of the material. So remember, we've changed the color of the material by going to diffuse and then clicking on this color. But instead of applying a uniform color to the material, we actually want to apply a specific texture, a specific image to it. And you'll see over here that there's kind of a checkerboard pattern. This currently is set to what should be my photograph of my, um, my material. Unfortunately, it's not there. So let's reload it. What I'll do is I'll right click on it and I'll say clear. And then I can click on it again. And this time I can add a bitmap. And so the bitmap essentially is a translation to photograph. So let me add that bitmap. And I'll go into my folder and lo and behold, in this particular folder where I have the material, I have three objects or three photographs. I have a diffuse, so a shingles under, underscore diff. I have a shingles underscore bump and I have a shingles underscore displacement. So we're gonna use the diffuse first. Go ahead and say open. And what that does is it takes this diffuse photograph and applies it to my material. So let's jump back. And now we can see that the diffuse photograph has been applied to the material. That's good. Then we can come down here and you'll see that there's a place for opacity. And lo and behold, this, this obviously doesn't have opacity, but guess what? There's a little checkerboard. We could apply an image to, to indicate what the transparency would be. But again, this one doesn't have it. I'll show you another one later that does. Then we come down to bump. This was the next piece of the puzzle. So if we go over into Photoshop, this was this piece this one that has the fine texture. Now, the easy thing about this is essentially what, what gives us this texture is a black and white version of our photograph. So I'll right click on the bump and we'll clear it. And then I'll click on the checkerboard again, go to bitmap. Oops, helps if I can actually click on bitmap. And I'm gonna use the bump right here that I created, which is just a black and white version of the file. And we'll go ahead and say open. That gives us that finer texture. That's the wood grain. And it's hard to tell in the preview that it's there, but yes, it is in fact there. So if I went over into my file here and I were to render it, I could click on the teapot to render it. Actually, you know what? Let me zoom in on one of these corners here so we can see it a little bit closer. Seriously? Wow, I'm having some trouble today. There we go. Uh, let me go ahead and render that again. Let me click on the teapot. And so we can see on this that there is a little bit of the texture that's been applied, the surface texture. But if we look at the edge, it's still perfectly flat as a material. So that's where this displacement map comes in. And I will tell you that the displacement is something that is uh, computer hungry. So if we're adding displacement maps to it, it's gonna make our rendering times go up, but it also adds a lot to our realism. So let's expand displacement here. And once again, I'm going to right click and say clear, and I'm going to add a bitmap image. Now the displacement's a little bit different. The displacement is a gradient from black to white, where, uh, and actually this one's inverted, where white is the highest point and black is the lowest point. So this is a little bit, it's set up differently. So there's actually a gradient that goes from black on this front edge all the way to white where the lowest point would be, or excuse me, they should be backwards, but it goes from highest to lowest point like that. Because this is backwards, I can actually invert it. There's a ability to invert here. There we go, invert texture. And now it's white on that front edge and gets black at the far back. That's just a mistake in how I built this texture. Okay, so now that I have all three of those, if I went to render again this time, what we want to do is we want to pay attention to the edge. So where this edge used to be just straight, as it finds tunes, 
you're going to see that it has the shingles starting to show up and it's still rendering out and maybe the quality won't give us a high enough quality but we can actually see that texture so those are the components that make up this but how do we get to creating these images in the first place well the first option and this is what i'm going to show you in um in part 2a is that we can do a Google search for our materials. So there used to be a great site. It was vraymaterials.co.uk. Their, their uh, site errors out. So if you do a Google search for V-Ray materials, right? This first one here, that this vraymaterials.de comes up. We can click on that. And then we can choose to look at what materials they have. So these are all materials that they've created. I'm going to explore some that are <clears throat> that have textures to them. So, you know, the shiny wood texture, uh, there's not too much to it, but some of these other ones do have some texture to them. So it would be worth kind of exploring it. So let's look at this one, this brick. If I click on this, it's gonna download the brick. Let's go ahead and open the file. And actually, we're probably going to have to uncompress it. So it's in a zip file. Let me right click and say extract all. It's in my downloads folder. And look, we have our color. That would be our, our standard um, diffuse. Then we have our displacement. This is the in and out. And then we have this one is probably the micro texture. This is probably the bump map. So we're digesting what it is. Unfortunately, this doesn't allow us to load it directly. So we're gonna to have to create it from scratch. So let's do that. So over here, I'm gonna create a brand new file or a brand new material. I'll click the little globe icon at the bottom. I'm gonna come up here into um, materials. I'm gonna create a new generic material. There it is. And let's call this one brick. There it is. Now, just as we did before with the cedar sh shingle siding, let's load in the components of this brick. So first off, we need the diffuse color. So we'll click on the texture here. We'll go up to bitmap. And it was in my downloads folder. There it is. And we'll start with the color. And we'll go ahead and say open. So there's our color. So if we go back to the material itself, it's now going to have that brick color on it. And if we were to take our object and apply the brick material to it, uh, apply to layer, actually, I'm just going to apply to selection. There it is. And we were to render it, we'd now have the brick material on it. But it would be a perfectly flat material. So it's just the photograph that's showing up. Let's start to add the other components. So if we look over at what they've given us, right? we have a displacement. And I think we can use this spec one as our um, bump map. So let's come over here into our bump. Let's add a bitmap. And we'll use this one as our bump. It's a high contrast black and white image. There it is. Now we have our bump set. So if we were to render it now, I need to up the size of this rendering. I'm sorry. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And then let me get into my V-Ray options. Oh, it's already open. Here we go. Let's go to render output. And then let's go ahead. Let's stop. And let's render again. As this starts to generate, we're going to see little imperfections on the surfaces of these objects. And they're starting to show up. We're starting to see that texture. The more, it would, it, the more passes it does, the better the quality is going to become. Now, our next piece right, was that displacement map. So if we go back to our materials and we look at our brick and we scroll down here, we see that, wait a minute, displacement isn't even shown. And it's not shown by default because, like I said, it's computer hungry. It needs a lot. So we can actually add it. So we could click on this Add Layer button right here. And our, oh, maybe it's the one next to it. Yep, sorry. 
not add layer, it's add attribute. We're going to add a displacement. There it is. And the displacement here, we're going to turn on. We'll expand it. And we're going to choose a bitmap. And it's going to be this one that's the displacement. I'll go ahead and say OK. Now, in this displacement settings, right there, we put it in. We have an amount. So this amount is actually relative to the units of your um, scene. So our units are in inches. So right now, the difference between white and black on this texture is going to be one inch. If we wanted that to be smaller, which it probably is, it would be more like 0.5. So the difference between black and white would only be a half of an inch. So if we were to stop our rendering, go back to it. There it is with its texture on it. Let's go ahead and stop it and restart it. We're going to start to see some much bigger differences in the texture. So give it a second. Like I said, this is much more computer hungry, so we have to go a little bit slower. Unfortunately, we just have to wait while it starts to build this up. What did you put your render output to? Uh, I put it up at uh, 1920 by 1080. Okay. Uh, and I, I did that on purpose because uh, I wanted to have a high enough quality so you could start to see what happens. So here we are. We could start to see it in the center here. My difference between my darks and lights, I set at a half an inch. But look at how spiky they are. That's a pretty dramatic change to this. And I don't think it looks particularly realistic. So I would need to go back in. Let's stop the render. I would need to go back into my V-Ray Asset Editor and say, you know what? This amount under displacement is way too high. You know, Maybe it's only 0.2 or 0.1. There's some value where that's the right value. So you have to do these test renderings to kind of see. So that's creating the brick. But what about if we wanted something that was kind of semi-transparent? Well, there are options for things like meshes. So they have this as an aluminum ceiling panel. Let's go ahead and download that one. There it is. In the last picture that we just saw, there is a gap between the sides of the shape. Correct, correct. So there was a gap when we had here, there's a gap on the edge because this is all sticking up and this is all sticking out. So there are strategies for how we deal with the material. This one, I exaggerated the displacement, which is causing a much bigger gap than there really should be. So if I did better texture mapping and I didn't have this as exaggerated, this gap would close up. OK. Um, so let's go back to my downloads here. So what I did is I downloaded that one. So let's look at what's in that file. I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract all. It is very important that you extract all. There it is. And then let's look inside what's in this folder. So we have, they have it called an aluminum ceiling. And then they have something called a mask. So this, in this case, this mask is going to control what part is transparent and what part isn't. So let's build up this material. And again, this is what I'm doing in part 2A of our exercise is I'm just finding materials online and then building them into an actual material. So let's go a new generic material. And we can call this one mesh. And under diffuse, the color, I'm going to load a map here. Let's go to bitmap. And there's my diffuse color. Go ahead and say open. There it is. Let's back up. And ooh, that's terrible. And this is one of the challenges that we have when you're working with somebody else's material. So in this case, there's a white border around the material. Um, so in order for this one to really work, I would need to um, crop the material so that it didn't have that white border. Because you can see right here that it has that white border showing up. So that's not going to work. So that's where Photoshop starts to come in. 
so I can edit this file. Instead of editing it, I'm going to do, use one of my own meshes just so we can move forward on this mesh. Uh, let's go in. I'm going to change from this. I'm going to go into my flash drive and I'll use one of my own meshes. And again, that's, that's the cost of using somebody else's material. We may have to make some changes. Let's go into materials, go into meshes and screens. And uh, here we go. Right, so this one, well, I don't know Forget about this. Okay, so here's one. It, this is a much bigger mesh, right? But I'll use this as my color. There we go. And so if I go back to my material, we can see there it is, but it's not transparent yet. So I need to come down into opacity. And if I expand opacity, I can actually load in a bitmap. And this bitmap is going to be the transparency. And I'll go ahead and say open. There it is. And if I go back and I look at it, in this case, I did it backwards. So it's made the wire transparent and it's kept the white part. So let's flip that. Let me click on the texture. We'll come down here to color manipulations and we'll invert it. There we go. And now when I go back, the wires are the part that's showing right there. So let's apply that to this object. I'm going to right click and say, apply to layer, or excuse me, apply to selection. And then we can do a rendering and see. So let me click on the little teapot. And now it's coming out as a wire. Now this, when we're zoomed in this close, you can see that it's perfectly flat. So this would be an opportunity to try to create some, some displacement so that we can get the roundness of the wire. Now, if we zoom out and we look at this material, uh, hold on a second, let's set view, render material test. There we go, we're zoomed out and we do the rendering from here. That looks a lot more like just a regular wire mesh would look because it's further away. So sometimes you can get away without the extra emphasis on it. So the idea here is that we're building up our materials from known sources. And um, like I said, I'm using that V-Ray materials. Unfortunately, I don't think this website is the best at materials. Um, that being said, there are other websites out there. You can do a Google search on your own to find more materials. Um, the uh, flying architecture, com is a really nice source for materials uh, and also um, you know rendering elements and whatever they do have a bunch of stuff in their store I in this class I will never ask you to actually purchase anything but you can any of the free stuff you can absolutely download they have a whole material section that you can work with some of them are free some of them are not uh, the difference here is that a lot of their materials are already built for V-Ray. So if I were to click this fine fabric and then I were to download it, it will already have the V-Ray VR mat file to load. So let's take a look at this one for a second. You can see that the quality is much higher. Let's open it up in its folder. Come on. There it is. I'm going to right click on it and say extract all. And we can look at what it gives us. So we've got that looks like there's a bunch. They're all VR map files. Those are files that we can load directly into V-Ray, which is great. They do have some maps. Let's look at what they have. Oh, they have different diffuse maps. It uh, looks like they have a height map. They have a glossiness. So we can load in a certain amount of glossiness. So again, we're working with all of these components and we could use that to create our layers uh, or our attributes for our materials. The good news is for them, they already have them, so we could actually use them directly. You could download them, use them. That's beyond the scope of what we're trying to do, 
obviously, because we've already downloaded our own materials. We're trying to build our materials. So the next question would be, what about if I wanted to create a material from scratch? Well, that's where Photoshop comes in. And this is the part 2B part where we're going to work in Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, you can follow along. If you're not familiar with Photoshop, take it with a grain of salt, work with the, um, the pre-done ones that other people have done. But sometimes you just want a material that you can't really find. And so what I would do if I were creating a material from scratch is I would start by trying to create or find an image of the material that I wanted. So let's say that I wanted to do a material for a standing seam metal roof. And this is something that I've, I, I haven't ever done. But what I'm talking about is, is something like this. Let's go to images. Where we have these like ribs in the roof. Right? And, or, or something like this where we have ribs. I'd like to do something like that. So what I would do is I would start with an image file that has uh, the material. Ideally, I'm looking for something that's kind of uniform in its size and as straight on. Let's look and see if I can find a... a specific... Sometimes these companies have an image that I could use. And I'm trying, I'm blanking on the one that I, I installed on my house. I think it's ASCDM, was that it? Hold on a second. Uh, hmm, I can't think of it. Well, I'm, I'm failing on it a little bit, but let's create it anyway. So uh, let's do, I want to do one where we're doing, I'll, I'll do this, don't worry, but I'm going to do something else first. Let's go to Unsplash and let's look for a picture of sighting. And we'll use that as an example to start. So if we were to pick a sighting example, let's say that we like this as our sighting example. One of the things that I'm looking for is fairly uniform color across the image because we're going to end up tiling this image across. This has a much redder edge to it than this does. So it's not that uniform. Other images might be better, um, but we can work with, with whatever we have. So, But you can see. cut only part of it. And exactly, and I can cut only part of it. This one actually looks pretty good. I think it's an ugly sighting, so I, don't, I hesitate to do it. But uh, let's... Let's just use it and we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. So let's click here. We'll download the original size. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. OK, so a couple things to know. Obviously, I want to use the middle of the image. But the other thing that's happening is if we look at the image, we've got some bending lines. We want our lines to be perfectly straight. So one of the things that I do as I start to work on this is I start to uh, use my guide. So I'll go to view and then rulers. And then I can drag down these guides to kind of see how straight things are. So this middle line here, yeah, that one's not too bad. But if we come up here, you can see that it's, it's really bending quite a bit. So we're going to need to make some corrections. So first off, I'll use the crop tool, and I'm going to crop this down. Oh, come on. Some days you just have bad luck. Oh, nope, I think I lost it again. I can get it back.
All right. Well, since I appear to be, <laughs> love it. Since I appear to be crashing that system, uh, I'm going to work on my home computer, uh, not on the remote desktop, just so I can finish this part of it, just so you can see it. Although I'm not going to be rendering in Rhino because I don't have Rhino right now. Uh, I'm thinking. Let me try again and see if I can get it back. This is totally ridiculous. Well, yes, I will work on this, but I don't know whether I'll actually be able to assemble it or not. So um, I went ahead and I downloaded the same picture. And there it is. Nope, that's not it. Where'd it go? Oh, I have to allow the download. There it is. Okay, so I'm back. So like I said, um, what I need is I need to view the rulers. So I'm going to go to view and then rulers. And I do that just so I can kind of see how these are coming together. So I know I don't want the sides because they're the wrong color. So let's go ahead and crop it. And we'll crop this down. As I start to create the crop, I want to think about what parts of this am I okay repeating? And also, where do I want to try to line it up? So about maybe halfway up of material. Maybe I want to be all the way up close to it. I don't know. Let's go halfway. And then at the bottom here, we'll make that come down about halfway. Say right about like that. We'll go ahead and crop it. But we still have some issues with our skewing. So we may have to come back and crop it again. So let's go up to Edit, Transform. Oops. I'm on a background layer. Let me right click and say layer from background. And then let me go to edit, transform, and we're going to go to skew. And what skew allows me to do is it allows me to kind of adjust what those, what's happening with those lines until I can get them all straight across. And so I may need to drag another guide down, but I can kind of tweak that until that's straight across. I can drag another guide down here at the bottom. We can see how straight that one is. Looks like this has to come down just a bit there. Like that. How is it across the middle? That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. So I'm reasonably happy with it now. I'm going to press um, Control-0 to zoom in. There we go. We're seeing it. Uh, how close was that middle one? Yeah, it's close enough for what we're doing. OK, so now I need this to become a tiling texture. And this is something that we did do in 135, where I take this image and I go up to my plugins. Uh, excuse me, I go up to my filters. Sorry. I have to commit to the uh, transform. There it is. Now we can go up to my filter. And I'm going to go to my uh, other and then offset. And what this offset filter does is it slices the image and allows me to work on the joint and make those joints kind of blend together. So I've got a joint roughly in the middle, oops, right about there, I'll have to work on. And I want a joint that's in the middle like that. So I need all of these to kind of end up blending together. It doesn't look like it did the best job at combining these um, or, or straightening them because they're kind of off. But what I would end up doing, and again, this is a matter of time because I'm running out of time for you guys, is I would use the clone stamp tool here to copy from a particular area. So I'll hold down the Alt key uh, on the Mac. It's the Option key. And I can copy from a particular area. And then I can work to blend those two together. 
So I can do the same thing here. This one's going to be much harder to do, but I can work my way down. And blend those two together. When it comes to the missing piece, we can basically just copy that in place. Copy it back this way. And again, I would work to kind of fade those together so that we're not seeing it. Likewise here, you know, we'll fade that together. Let's copy this over right like that. And again, I don't want to spend the whole time doing it, but I have to create this uh, tiling texture such that it will, there we go, be usable long-term. And hopefully those of you that took 135 are now seeing part of why I made you learn how to do this. All right, last one is up here. So we can't fix that. There, like that. So again, less than ideal, but close enough. So I have this, it'll tile in all directions. I'm gonna save it. So I'll go to file and then export. And I'm gonna export as, and it doesn't matter here whether it's a JPEG or a PNG, we're gonna leave it as a JPEG. We'll do a maximum, we'll export it. And uh, I'm just gonna save it on, uh, actually I should save it in my uh, OneDrive just in case we get the computer to work again here. All right, and this was my red siding. There it is. And we'll go ahead and click on save. Now, I need the same image in black and white with kind of high contrast to get the, the texture out. So I'm going to do a layer and then an adjustment layer, and we'll do a levels adjustment on it so that I can kind of get the high contrast. So we'll, we'll bump this up a lot. We'll bump that up a lot. So we're trying to bring out the, the contrast in it. And then I also need it to be black and white. So I'll go up to my layer, new adjustment layer. And we're going to do a channel mixer. And we'll convert it to black and white. So we're seeing this in black and white. Then I'll go ahead and I'll save that. So I'll go to file. And we'll go to export selected, or excuse me, export, export as. And again, we'll do the high, we'll click on export, and this is now the bump. I'll click save. And then the last one, and this is the one that involves more work, is the displacement. And so for the displacement, like I said, we need a gradient that goes from white to black on every one of these uh, pieces of siding. So I would create a selection that would come across here like that, for example. And then I need to, on a new layer, so I'll click a new layer here, I need to actually create a gradient from black to white that goes, and black's in the foreground, so that would be at the top. I'm gonna hold down shift to make it straight and go from one to the other. So I'm, I'm going from black to white, that then, over the course of this will serve as my displacement map. So I'll go back to gradient, start at the top, hold down shift to keep it straight. And there's my next gradient. I'll keep doing this for each uh, of did, these. Uh, did you create the black and white, the color itself? So the black and white is just my foreground and background color. And then I'm using the gradient tool in this selection so I've made the selection with the marquee tool. And then I'm just starting at the top, click and drag down. This is the difference between black and white until it touches right there. Now, when we get to this last piece, this is a little bit challenging. Sometimes the easiest method is actually to just copy what we just created. I did control uh, C, control V will give us a paste of it. And then we can, line it up like that because we really only have white there 
down here at the bottom, we're ending with our black there, but it's a partial gradient because we have to kind of match them up because they're going to tile. Uh, I'm just going to paste these in and do the rest of them, though in reality, I should probably do each of the sightings might not be exactly the same in their size like that. So I've created this black and white image with these gradients on it. That represents the shingles and how we're going to use them in the displacement map. So I'll go to file and then export and then export as. And we'll save this last one as our displacement. So using this same principle, if we wanted a roof, for example, we would just have to create the texture and then we could even just apply a regular color to it. So I can do a new, that was not the size that I wanted. Just do a square here. Sorry, my dialog box is on the other side of the page. There it is. Uh, and essentially, I could create the same thing just with some ribs, right? So I could, I could put, if this was standing up, I could just create a series of these ribs. And I'm not being perfectly accurate, but if Photoshop or Rhino decides to work, I'll show you how this would work. Otherwise, I'll have to show it to you next class. Let me paint those in in black. This is just creating that contrast between black and white. So I could have these pieces stand up. Actually, it should be the opposite of this. These should be white and the background should be black. But anyway, I could save these and I can use those for my roof a little bit later on. So let's go to file. Let's go to export, export as. I'm just going to call this roof displacement. So as you start to learn how, how this whole process works, you can create almost anything in Rhino. Let's see if I can get back into Rhino right now or whether it's going to be cranky. So it's not looking particularly promising. So what I'll do is I'll let you guys go. Um, and I, you can at least do the part, assuming you can log in, you can do the part uh, where you're building the materials from examples you find online. Uh, I will continue this final rendering part at the beginning of next lecture, just so that you can see me actually render these out, uh, the ones that I've made as examples. Um, but at least you saw me do it in Photoshop. I just am not able to show you the uh, the final version of it. And uh, it's just driving me nuts that it's kicking me out like this. But it is what it is. So anyway, that being said, I will let you guys go. Remember, we do have check-ins this week. Now would be a good time to start thinking a lot about what you're creating for your assignment uh, 201s, your table and your chair. So start thinking about that. If you want to talk about it, if you want to talk about strategies or how you might model something, that's a great opportunity to talk about that during a check-in. If you have other questions, of course, come and we'll talk uh, at that point. So let's take about a 10 minute break. I'll come back at 1220 uh, for anybody who wants to join that session and we'll go from there. Thank you guys. Sorry for the technical problems today. <laughs>